What's up YouTubers? Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is something I've been wanting to do for, for quite a long time now and so I'm really excited to finally have the opportunity to do it and uh, share with some of the stuff that I've been making with you guys. And so to kick things off today we're going to be making a wand with a center compartment that stores your phoenix feather or the, the wand core of your choice. Okay. Uh, the method that we're going to be using is based off of Phil Gershwin uh, from, from Gershwin Woodcrafts. Uh, he had produced a video about how to make a, a phoenix feather wand. Uh, my technique is based off of that. Uh, I've made some adjustments and some modifications and that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today. So, I have, I'll grab it here, I have this piece of, uh, this block of Honduran rosewood. Uh, right now this is 18 inches long and about an inch and a half thick. Um, you don't have to start with a block this quite this long or this thick. Uh, this probably will create quite a bit of waste material. Um, but unfortunately with some of the exotic woods it's difficult to find spindles that are much smaller than this uh, that would work unless you start uh, using different woods or different pieces. So uh, I'm starting with this. You don't have to. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, mark off some lines and cut it down into two pieces. One piece for the handle and one piece for the stem. Now, because this block is 18 inches long, I'm going to take about 6 inches for the handle and the rest is going to be dedicated for, for the stem of the wand. So the first, my first step is going to be taking it to the bandsaw. So that's where we're going to head now. Okay, so here we are at the bandsaw, and I have my straight edge here that I'm just going to use to mark off uh, about the six inch point. I'm not sure how well you can see this on the camera, but I'm just going to make a little pencil line here, and then square, the, square it off at that mark. So I have a little bit of a marking line on the spindle. And we're not going to use all six inches of this handle for, for the handle, uh, but we do want to have some, some room there to, to work once we cut it off. So, just my miter gauge here. I'm going to line this up on the fence. off at about the six inch mark which will give us two pieces one for the handle one for the stem and so now we have two separate pieces for the wand the handle and the stem our next step is going to be to mark the centers of each end of each piece. To mark the centers of each of the spindles, I, I have this center marking tool and it has some little notches that make a right angle so I simply line those notches up and then there's a, a diagonal with which I can just draw a line to mark the centers and then I just go ahead and do that on all four sides of the spindle. This makes things really quick uh, as far as centering goes. Uh, this tool, I think it, it's like 10 bucks. It's, it's super cheap uh, and it saves me a lot of time. So I like to use this. Uh, if you don't have one of these, that's okay. Uh, you can also just use your, your standard straight edge or roller. Uh, all you gotta do is just line it up along the diagonals and that works too. So um, that's also a perfectly fine option. There's some other ways of uh, finding center as well, different tools and stuff out there. Um, I've tried a couple of them. Some of them do a good job, uh, a lot of them don't. Um, I find that this tool seems to do the best job and is, is easiest to use. So uh, that's what I tend to stick with and it tends to produce the most uh, accurate results as well. Um, you'll also notice that I'm actually using a mechanical pencil here. Uh, I like the mechanical pencil because when you're doing any kind of spindle work, uh, being on a center point, a very accurate center point, is, is very important. Uh, the mechanical pencil has a much 
thinner uh, piece of lead, which allows me to have very uh, precise points. So um, I have a little X on both ends. I don't know if you can see this or not. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up or not. Um, and I'm going to do that on both the handle and the stem on both ends. It's important if you're using a center finer to mark the X on all sides, all four sides of the spindle, because in the event that the, the wood that you're using is not perfectly square, uh, you're going to have uh, different lines for different sides, and you can't rely on just doing two ends. This piece of wood that I'm using here is actually pretty straight though, so I'm getting pretty accurate marks. Okay, so. Again, there's the, the X in the center, and my next step is going to be to make a little dent uh, on each of those X's to help guide my drill bits, because our next step is going to be to drill the hole to have the, the coupling. Okay, so now it's time to put some dents onto uh, the center mark here. Uh, I have this tool that actually came from another type of center marking tool. Um, didn't very, work very well for me, so I just took the little punch out of it, and that's what I'm using to, to mark the tool. So, all I do is I put the point in the middle of the X, kind of hold it in place, take my rubber mallet, just make a little bit of a dent, just enough to help guide the drill bit. And I'm going to do that again on each end of each piece. One's done. That one's good. And we're good to go. Now, our next step is going to be drilling the center out on the two ends that are going to be screwed together. Uh, to do this, I'm going to be using a half inch drill bit, and we're only going to be drilling a little bit. But before we do that, uh, it's important to kind of mark the ends and, and line your wood up so that you know which ends are go where so that the grains can match up. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pencil here and quite literally just draw an arrow pointing towards the tip of the wand or in this case pointing towards where the lock nut's going to be. So there's that end and I'm also going to do it on this piece as well in a couple of different places. This will help keep our grains lined up and make sure that we're working on the correct end. Okay, so I got some arrows drawn on each piece and we're going to get ready to drill the holes. Now, before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about how we're going to be connecting these two wand pieces together. Um, I picked up these two pieces, let me try and get it in the camera here. Um, I picked up these two things at Lowe's. Uh, now, I quite literally spent weeks and weeks and weeks trying to find uh, a solution that would work that will allow me to kind of screw the, the two pieces of wands together. And I tried hardware stores and I've looked all over, uh, even to the point where I considered getting some custom parts made. Um, then as a last ditch effort, I went back to Lowe's and I, I asked the guy to see if they knew of anything that what I was looking for existed. Uh, they actually pointed me into the uh, lighting aisle, and what these are, these are some couplings and some threaded rods that are used for lamp making. Uh, so these are in kind of a, an end shelf uh, in the lighting aisle. I, I can post some links below uh, on where you can actually buy these parts online on Lowe's as well. Um, but these are what we're going to be using to uh, put our wand together. So uh, each of these couplings, you're going to have one coupling in each end. So there's going to be one in the handle, or you know, one in the handle and one into the stem, 
and then we're going to use one of these threaded rods to go between the two pieces and that's how you're going to get the uh, the screw working. Um, even though this pack comes with a lot of different threaded rods, we're actually going to be using quite a few of these in, when it comes to actual turning and stuff so that we can hold it on the lathe and keep everything centered. Um, we're probably going to use one of these smaller ones to actually connect the two pieces uh, and some of these larger ones are going to be used when, when putting it on the lathe and chucking it up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this pack up here uh, because that's what we're going to be using to mark our drill bits. So let me try and grab one, get one of these out here. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, uh, the diameter of, of this coupler is about half, of, half an inch. Um, so I have my half inch drill bit here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take just a little bit of painter's tape Sneak a strip of that off. And I'm going to hold this coupler up to the drill bit, figure out where exactly I need to be marking it off. And then I'm going to just put a piece of tape at about that spot. Let me just make sure that's about right. And if you're a little tiny bit off, that's okay. Uh, this will still work. Um, I would err on the side of drilling it too deep than too shallow, because if you're too shallow, then uh, this piece is actually going to stick up past the, the uh, handle, and the, the, the two pieces aren't going to fit together very well. So it's better to go a little bit too deep than to go too shallow. But I have my drill bit taped off. We're going to put it into my drill chuck and we're going to drill into the two parts of the wand that are going to sit together like so. Okay, so at this point we have the handle chucked up into a four jaw chuck and then we also have our half inch drill bit over here into my uh, drill chuck which is also known as a Jacobs chuck and so you can see the, the piece of marking tape on here. I'm going to go ahead and drill this hole now. So once the lathe gets up to speed here, I can start feeding this drill bit in. Now this is a big drill bit, so you want to go take it slow. drilled into it. We're going to take this off the chuck here and we're going to see how our fit is. Oops. So as you can see we got the hole drilled and we're going to take our coupler here and we're going to just put it down into that hole and see how our fit is. Now this is going to be a very snug fit. Um, it's not going to just pop right in there and you want it to be a snug fit. Um, so if you have to take a mallet to it to uh, get it the rest of the way in, that's fine. Alternately you could uh, put a piece of sandpaper on a dowel and sand, kind of sand the edges so that it goes in a little bit easier. Uh, either one is fine, but you do want to make sure that it's a nice snug fit. Uh, and we are going to reinforce this eventually with some glue. But uh, as you can see, it's not pushed the whole way in just yet. It has a little bit more to go, so I'm going to use my mallet to kind of knock the rest of the way in. And this is a pretty good fit. Um, it's not absolutely perfect. I might be able to get that in a little bit more. I'm not sure if it's the hole is too shallow or if it's because um, I just can't pound it in enough. So to what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take one of those screws 
that we had purchased in addition to the, the coupling. And I'm going to thread that in, make sure that the, the threading works. That's pretty good. I'm going to pound that in just a, a little bit further. And yeah, that, that did the trick. So the hole was, was perfectly shallow enough. And now we have a nice flush edge with that coupling right where it needs to be. Okay, so with that end done, as you can see, we're going we're gonna to test the screwing mechanism up, out, make sure that the does indeed hold that. And actually, this longer screw here is going to be what we're using uh, in our drill chuck later to uh, hold this onto the lathe to make sure that it stays centered. Now, just as a side note, um, if you ever need to get this out of there, um, rather than trying to, you know, put something down the center and pry it out, uh, an easy way to do it is actually to take one of these screws and screw it in just a little bit, and then you can actually take this with some pliers and, or even just your hands, and that should, uh, you should be able to weasel that back out of there. Um, that's the nice thing about having all these extra threaded rods in this package. Um, it, they're great to kind of work within these uh, these couplers here, so that if you ever need to take them out, or if you ever need to hold them up on a chuck or whatever, uh, they're great. It doesn't matter if they get scuffed up because they're not actually part of the components of the wand. So we have the, the handle done. It's set to go. Uh, I may pull this back out of here with one of these uh, threaded rods uh, and put some glue, some wood glue or some CA glue in there to just kind of help make sure that stays in place and doesn't loosen up over time. Um, that's optional. If this is a tight enough fit, um, you don't have to do that. But if you are going to glue it, make sure that the glue does not get within the inner threads of this coupler here, otherwise you're not going to be able to screw the thread or broad down through it. So anyways, our handle's done uh, for now, so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the stem of the wand. Okay, so we have the handle, or the stem, chucked up now. Um, important to note, don't let the arrows confuse you. Um, a common mistake, I've, I've done it a couple of times myself, is because the arrows are pointing a certain way, I think that's the direction that I need to be drilling in. Um, it actually needs to be the opposite. So um, we're going to be drilling into the bottom part of the handle. So if, if this is the, the wand handle here, we're going to be drilling into the bottom part, not the tip. Okay, uh, so don't let the arrows confuse you and get that backwards, otherwise your stem or your wood grain is not going to line up properly. Uh, we have this chucked up. We're going to go ahead and drill, drill it with our half inch bit. And then we have another hole to make so that we can drill this into this a little bit deeper to house whatever kind of uh, core that you're going to be using. So we're going to start with our half inch and only drill in just long enough for the coupler. And then we're going to chase that with a different type of drill bit. This hole drilled in there, I'm going to pop off, pop this off the lathe real quick here. Okay. And before I go any further, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put one of these couplers into the end make sure it fits, but more importantly, I want to make sure that my two pieces fit together. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
So I'm going to take this shorter threader, threaded rod and I'm going to thread that in there about halfway. And then I'm going to take my handle and I'm going to screw that on to the other end of it. And what we're looking for is to make sure that when the two meet in the middle, a little bit of screeching noise there, you want to make sure that they line up pretty closely. In which this case, we are about exactly on, which is great news. Uh, if you're not lined up at this point, um, that's a tough call because from here on out, by the time you finish, uh, your, your pieces are going to be off-centered and they're not going to screw together very evenly. So at this point, um, you may end up having to start over or at least starting with a new, new uh, stem and the wood grains are probably not going to match up. So it's very important to make sure that these line up at this point before you get too much further into the process. Uh, in my case they do, so I'm going to go ahead and unscrew these again, chuck this stem back up and drill this hole in deeper with a with a smaller drill bit to house the uh, wand core. Okay so now in my drill chuck I have a 7 millimeter drill bit. Uh, it's a lot thinner and the nice thing about these half inch drill bits is that they have this point on the tip that once, uh, once I have my hole for the coupler it leaves another dent to kind of guide my drill bit, uh, my next drill bit. So uh, I'm going to chase this hole a little bit deeper uh, to except so that this uh, handle accepts a little bit of a longer wand core and doesn't really matter how deep you go um, but it is important what size drill bit that you use here because if you go too thick then once you start turning this you run the risk of hitting that hole and then you're going to have either a hole in your side or it's going to just blow out and, and come off the lathe uh, neither of which you want so um, I like to go with a seven millimeter um, that way it's, it reduces that risk, it lets me have a little bit thicker sidewalls. Um, you can go a bit thicker if you're going to be using some sort of a thicker wand core. Um, I like a 7mm because it fits nicely through our threaded rods, so um, I like to keep my wand cores as something that will actually fit within the, the whole unit. So, uh, I have this chucked up, I'm going to go ahead and drill this. that done I'm gonna go ahead and glue my couplers in and we're gonna be able to begin turning okay I'm getting ready to glue this coupler into my handle and before I do that one thing that I like to do and one little tip is I, I like to take one of these spare threaded rods and, and thread that the whole way through this coupler that way uh, it reduces the risk of glue getting on the inside threads, which will then stop me from being able to glue something or to screw this threaded rod in here later. So uh, I have this uh, screwed in here. I'm going to take some CA glue and I'm just going to apply that. Well, before I do that, I'm going to sand. Before I do that, I'm going to sand this coupler up a little bit, just scuff it up a little bit, that'll help the glue to adhere to it. It's a little bit better. And with that scuffed up, I'm going to put just a little bit of CA glue 
around that and just a tad bit on the inside of the hole here. Go ahead and fit that in there. I'm going to use a mallet to help drive that in. And once that's in there, that glue will dry and hopefully we'll keep make that a little bit more permanent. And then once once you have that done, you can go ahead and take this threaded rod out and let that leave that to dry a little bit. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing to the handle. Okay. So now that our couplers are glued in, uh, it's getting it's it's time to turn. It's not finally time to turn this thing down. And we're going to start with the handle because that's usually the the most difficult of the two. Uh, so to chuck this up and to keep it centered, what I'm going to do is I've actually threaded this spare threaded rod in through the coupler and I threaded it down as far as it'll go uh, towards the bottom there. And then I'm going to take my my drill chuck and I'm actually just going to use that to grip onto this threaded rod here Oops. I'm going to come out a little bit so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put this into my headstock and then I have a live center on the tailstock which I just bring up to the little dent that we made earlier Go ahead and put some some pressure on that. And even if you make a even if the tip of this uh, tailstock puts a little bit of a hole into the bottom of this piece, that's okay um, because we're probably not going to use the entire length of this. Um, we are going to want to make sure that we're going to the very top of where the the coupler is though. So that's going to be the top of our handle and then we're going to just take this down and we can give ourselves a little bit of uh, waste wood towards the bottom here uh, so that we can part this off and, and get a nice smooth uh, bottom of the wand. Okay, so with that chucked up I believe we are ready to start turning this handle down. Okay, so I think we're just about done with turning the handle. I, I have the, the rough shape that I want. Uh, so now I'm going to get right into sanding this down and then finishing it as much as I can. Then I'm going to part it off and that should be good for the handle. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the stem. Okay, so uh, here we have the completed handle of the wand. Uh, I went ahead and just sanded it down and polished it up. 
uh, parted it off and uh, put the um, threaded rod in through here. So this is ready to go. Our next step is going to be to just uh, turn the handle down or the stem in the same way and then we can assemble it. Okay, so we have our stem chucked up here the exact same way that we chucked up the handle uh, with the threaded rod into the coupler and then the threaded rod into the uh, drill chuck that's in my headstock. have my tailstock pulled up and into the dent that we had made uh, in the beginning. So now we just have to turn the stem down and also uh, polish it up, part it off, and we're good to go. Uh, just one final thing to note is you do want to pay a little bit of attention to what the diameter is on your handle, uh, this diameter here, so that you can kind of turn this uh, stem to match because you don't want to have uh, a thin handle and then have the, the stem come out a lot wider than that. So uh, I'm going to measure this up and then I'm going to turn this down uh, to about the roughly the same diameter and that should finish the wand for me. Okay, time to get turning. Okay, so it looks like we have the handle pretty much turned down. I had a little bit of a breakage there at the tip, but that's okay. I was able to smooth it out a little bit. Um, looks like it's a little bit bent, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sand this down and then polish it, and we'll see how it comes out. Okay, well, at this point we have a finished and polished wand tip. So let's pull this off the lathe here and pull it out of our drill chuck. We're going to take out our threaded rod. And we're going to see how it fits together on that handle that we previously made. So we have our handle here. And we have almost a perfect fit. So I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but this is where the wand joins. And so, at this point, our wand is just about finished. I'm going to go ahead and put another coat of polish on the handle here to match the stem. And then we can go ahead and get started on getting the core completed. Um, just a couple of notes 
uh, on on my polishing process uh, for those who may be wondering. Uh, one, uh, I started with a 150 grit sandpaper and I sanded up to about 600 grit. Uh, and then for my polishing process, uh, I actually use this uh, Mylan's high friction wood polish. Um, so that's, uh, that was my polishing technique. Um, also, if you noticed a couple of times throughout there, um, I wiped the, the wand down, and to do that I used uh, just some, some denatured alcohol. Um, that kind of does a good job of getting the dust off without getting the wood overly saturated. So I'm going to go ahead and chuck this uh, handle back up and put another coat of polish on it, and then I'll see you back when we get ready to put the wand core together. Okay. So we are just about finished with our wand here. We have our uh, wand handle, we have our wand stem. So of course the only thing left to do is the wand core. Now uh, you can go as creative or as basic as you want. Uh, I have this, this feather here which I think is actually a, a blue jay feather. Um, all you have to do is just let it, I like to put it in the, with feathers I like to put down into the handle that way uh, you're not trying to push the feathers in against their grain. So I like to just slide that down in as far as it can go. Put the other end into the nozzle and screw it together. And there we have our completed cord wand. Um, another thing you can do as far as uh, cores go is I have this, which is quite literally just a dowel with some uh, green wire wrapped around it. So this could be your dragon heart string. Uh, you can use any assortment of feathers or even little vials, whatever you can find uh, to put in here. Uh, it's up to you. But uh, this is the completed wand. This isn't necessarily the, the favorite design that I've ever done, but uh, I think it serves to at least get the point across of how my process works. So. That's it. I hope you enjoyed watching. Be sure to leave your comments and feedback, and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.